Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you to the organizers for giving me this uh, opportunity. So a uh, few of the points uh, have been uh, covered in the previous talk and in the same breath, let me uh, talk more. I shall mention about the TMH study and the CNS uh, metastatic data too. So uh, what do we mean by first line TKI with something in EJFR mutated lung cancer? I'll discuss my talk under these headings. We'll try to look at what's the rationale for this. What is the thought process, why we are, want to add something to the EGFR TKI, what's the evidence and what are the guidelines and then my take on it. So the rational simply put, it's basically, uh, it's a strategy to prevent rather uh, delay emergence of resistance. So what are we really expecting from this something? Now, when we're treating a, a metastatic NSCLC with an EGFR TKI, obviously over time resistance develops because of the sub clone, uh, uh, you know, there are some resistance uh, clones which evolve by different mechanisms. So we are trying to target them before their evolution, right in the beginning. We want those, uh, we don't want those resistant subclones to even evolve. So that's why we devise a non-overlapping pathway and then uh, treat the disease. Now that is one of the reasons. There are uh, other hidden reasons like what? So about 20 to 30 percent of the patients do not even receive the second line. So why not give them that benefit right in the first line? Let us try to devise a method by which we can give the maximum benefit to our patient in the first time, which which probably is their only chance they have. Uh, apart from that, now when a resistant mutation develops, for example, once we have exhausted using osmotinib in first line, we do not have any other reserve medications and so for the want of better sequence if we can use something else before and if we can reserve osmotinib for second line and thereby give a better sequence of treatment to our patients maybe we'll be able to give better benefit and of course not every patient can afford osmotinib so is there anything else that will give uh, at least similar responses so uh, once on a ej for tki the patient develops resistance by various mechanisms. It could be either dependent, EGFR independent or dependent. We are all very much aware of this. Apart from this, there is a lot of talk, crosstalk that's happening between the EGFR and the VEGF pathway. So it is, it, it the, the talk, crosstalk is so much that, uh, so VEGF obviously plays a role in all the cancers. We know that uh, we are using VEGF inhibitors in almost all cancers, but particularly EGFR mutant MN, uh, metastatic NSCLC, there, it has been found that the VEGF expression is more. And uh, whenever uh, EGFR is activated, that in turn leads to VEGF activation too. And when we are blocking EGFR2, there is indirectly VEGF uh, signaling which is activated. So that is why this is a very, very uh, potential uh, target for treatment. So theoretically, when I say, ki, you know, there are these downstream pathways or logic will tell you, ki, you should probably be able to combine anything. And, you know, that something could probably even be transduzumab for an anti-HER2 uh, mechanism, uh, AKT inhibitor, uh, probably uh, MEK inhibitor, cement inhibitor, even bevacizumab. But then we are the, this is all preclinical. This is only our thought process, but clinical scenario is different. There is a lot of gap between what we are thinking and what we are seeing. So basically, uh, evidence is very little. Like I'll just walk you through the entire evidence that we have. So the, we have been able to combine first generation TKI with anti VEGF agents, that is, bevacizumab and ramsirumab. There is evidence to combine it with chemotherapy, and there is some evidence to combine both first and second and the third generation TKI2. This is the evidence which already Dr. Vamshi had briefly mentioned. I will walk you through this. So for third generation TKI, we, the evidence is still evolving. There is FLORA2 going on, which is combining osipentinib with chemotherapy. There is a Mariposa trial, which is looking at third generation TKI lazartinib with mevantamab. And uh, combination of osipentinib with bevacizumab was a negative trial. The one with ramosirumab, that is the Ramos trial, is still ongoing. So let's just look at the first generation EGFR TKI combinations. This is the NEJ026 uh, trial, which was conducted in Japan across about 50 hospitals. And uh, this uh, in 2019, when the results were released uh, for the PFS, it did show a PFS benefit, which was statistically significant. But over time, that is last year in 2021, when they sh uh, showed their OS analysis, there was no OS benefit. OS, though, was way superior than what we saw, saw in even flora and the archer trials 
so it was almost 50 months. So though it was numerically better, but there was no statistically significant benefit. And whenever we are adding a drug, we obviously should anticipate more uh, toxicities. But this trial showed that the quality of uh, life decline was not as much uh, in bevacizumab alotinib. I mean, it was more or less comparable with the alotinib arm. So why was there no benefit in this trial? Uh, the authors attribute this to the skewed data, which could be because of the subsequent therapies. Also, they also attribute it to the shorter follow-up and the small sample size. Then this is the Eastern uh, region data. Looking at the Western, that is, uh, this Beverly trial was conducted in Ita Italy. And again, they, they tried to look at the benefit of adding Bevacizumab. There was only PFS benefit, no OS benefit. However, one interesting thing is that smokers former or current smokers seemed to benefit. Now, what could be the reason behind this? We don't know, but this is a food for thought because uh, uh, EG for mutation as such, you don't find in smokers. Maybe in such patients, after all, when you combine with something else, the EGFR uh, TK might work better. Coming to the relay trial, as already, already mentioned, uh, so this looked at a combination of alotinib with ramucirumab versus alotinib with placebo. Its primary endpoint was PFS, which it met, and it also showed benefit in the interim OS analysis and the PFS too. However, the OS data is still awaited. And as you can see, the AEs were not as bad as we would expect by, when we are combining ramucirumab. It's more or less the grade 3 AEs were similar in the ramucirumab arm versus the alotinib alone arm. However, hypertension, the, the incidence of hypertension was high, which is easily manageable with the oral medications. Now, how is this trial different from the bevacizumab trials? R Ramacizumab has a broader spectrum of activity and thereby it can give you higher response rates. And that is why I think this is a viable option. Uh, and it, it also showed benefits across all the subgroups. So let's see what the OS data will show. Now coming to the NEJ009 trial, this this was the first uh, first trial to show a uh, PFS, uh, uh, I mean PFS benefit, PFS2 benefit too, and uh, this combined jeftinib with carboplatin and pemtrexid versus jeftinib alone. So uh, there they wanted to test uh, OS hierarchy, hierarchically, and uh, only if PFS2 uh, clause would be met, then they would analyze the OS. Though the trial as such showed OS benefit, which was statistically uh, uh, benefit, I mean significant, but problem was that the original PFS2 data was not significantly different between the two arms. It was only the modified PFS2, that is adjusted PFS2 data was significant. And that is why the authors think that their OS data needs to be validated further. Benefit was seen across all these subgroups and uh, side effects were more, but the discontinuity rate was similar, that is 10% in both the arms. Now coming to talk about the our own Tata trial. Yes, definitely this is the only trial to actually show OS benefit apart from the FLORA trial. And uh, we are very much aware of the uh, uh, PFS and the OS benefit. Um, however, so it comes at a cost, the benefit comes at a cost and the toxicity is higher, the discontinuity rates were higher with the chemo arm when compared to the Jeftinib arm. Now this trial did include 13% uh, patients had brain metastasis, but uh, most of the patients had received whole brain RT. So maybe that also plays a role in the uh, uh, benefit analysis. Now coming to talk about the third generation EJ for TK, like I mentioned, Osmotinib is being combined with Jefitinib. Why so? Because Jefitinib has activity against the C797S mutation and Osmotinib, uh, of course, we know it acts against T790M. So probably this combination can overcome the resistance that we see in all, uh, os previously Osmotinib treated patients. So uh, this is still ongoing. So far, they have uh, treated 27 patients of whom uh, they, they found a response rate of almost 89%, which is impressive. Uh, other trials with osmotinib are ongoing. So what do the guidelines say? The guidelines, NCCN has already incorporated alotinib and ramucirumab and alotinib bevacizumab combinations just on the PFS data. Uh, we, we know that OS data is yet to come and a bev, bev combination didn't even show OS benefit. This is the uh, ESMO guidelines and uh, apart from the uh, VEGF inhibitors, they have also incorporated the uh, chemo and the uh, Jeftinib combination also. Now, my take on this, like earlier Dr. Vamshi mentioned, I agree with him that brain metastasis, I think we, we all put, uh, put our hands down and it's it has to be osmotinib only because relay trial did not include patients with brain metastasis and the Tata trial, the representation was small. Most of the patients had received whole brain RT. 
for me probably a, if a patient is fit and affordability is an issue i would uh, go for gefitinib with chemotherapy combination and if a patient is still uh, preserved as in there is a performance status is good patient is affordable upfront i would like to try a uh, lotinib with ramsurumab of course until we wait for the os data if this os benefit is not seen then we we will be left over only with gefitinib and chemotherapy combination so thank you excellent presentation dr rekha uh any questions okay uh,